Hey gang, Roden here. Welcome on back to the Cade and the AFC Conference Championship game here on Sega Sports NFL 2K2 as part of our great what if scenario in creating the New England Patriots dynasty of the 21st century without the existence of Tom Brady. We managed to get through the Oakland Raiders last week without any controversy other than, if you really want to say there was controversy, our offense finally showed up. We put 35 on Oakland to win, going away 35-7. But now we've really got our work cut out for us. Is in order to punch our ticket to Super Bowl 36, we have to go through the Baltimore Ravens. And these Baltimore Ravens were no slouches. These were Brian Billick's team that had just won the Super Bowl two years prior with guys like Ray Lewis on the defense. Now, the, the thing I'm curious about is, as I pull up, the Ravens here, did they have Ed Reed on this squad yet? Because looking at it from their draft profile in 2001, they didn't have him yet. And he's not in the backfield. But that doesn't mean that the Ravens are depleted on that side of the ball. So it will be us versus Baltimore and then the Saints going up against the Rams. And the Saints may actually prove to be a stunner here. They eked out a win over the Niners, the San Francisco 49ers, 14-13, and the Rams... Had an easier time with the New York Giants, 31-22. But. The Baltimore Ravens have Randall Cunningham as their quarterback, along with Elvis Gerbach and Chris Redman. They don't have a really great running back core, and their wide receivers are not outstanding, but they're not terrible either. Tight end is where you have to worry about it because they have the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp and their offensive line. They still have the Hall of Famer Jonathan Ogden and then you look at the defense and it's big Sam Adams, big Tony Saragusa. Uh, they still had Rob Burnett on the defensive end and then the linebacking core of Peter Bulware, Jamie Sharper, and Ray Lewis. You get through those three and then you have Rod Woodson, who they're showing here, the Hall of Fame safety, along with Chris McAllister, Carnell Lake, the former Pittsburgh Steelers safety, Dwayne Starks, and James, uh, James Trapp. So we win the toss, and we will elect to kick again. Now, the only thing we can really hope for against this Ravens team is that if their offense is as milk toast as their championship year was in, uh, in 1999, when Trent Dilfer was the quarterback of that squad, then it just simply comes down to our ability to find any way to get movement on that Ravens defense. I don't expect this is going to be as high scoring an affair for us as last week's game was. So it's Gerbach at center and Jamal Lewis who had spent most of the year on the injured reserve list, according to my stats here. They're not letting a wishful thought get past the line of scrimmage. I think they're even driving them back a bit, Peter, and that is great D. Yeah, you know, it's moments like this that test your resolve. Will this offense rise to the challenge or slink so away? So it'll be second and 13, and then Sam Gash is the secondary running back. And that was incomplete. So they're looking for Travis Taylor, the wide receiver. Could not bring it down. It's all about ball control, Dan. All right, 
I mean, they also had Kadri Ishmael and Patrick Johnson, who were good rece good enough receivers in their own right. Although they weren't perennial All-Pros and they weren't Hall of Famers. And that one's incomplete, almost picked off by Lauren Malloy, and that should have been a sack. And speaking of, they were looking for Taylor again. Yeah, they're probably going to punt it away, and that is going to hurt. So we'll force them to punt for the first time today, and now it's going to be the first big test for our offense to see what we can do against against Ray Lewis in this defensive front for the Ravens. The Patriots want to be the first to crack that scoreboard. They have an opportunity here to take an early lead. And the thing is, it's not just Lewis. It's the defensive tackles. It's Sam Adams and Sarah Goose who were great run blockers. And by having them being able to plug the gaps up front, that allowed the linebacking core to just basically dog will hunt. And my God, did they hunt. That's Saragusa right there. And yes, you could easily make the argument that the Baltimore defense started and ended with Ray Lewis. I mean, he was the anchor of that team for the entirety of his career. We find Johnson first down. And Lewis was right there on the stop. The blitz are coming and shut it down. That is so crucial if they can pick up the rush like that. Once he has enough time, the quarterback can see all kinds of And if our offensive line can actually come together as a unit and work like they did last week, that's going to be the one saving grace we have. But Adams and Saragusa again there on the stop for the run. All right, so second and nine. Here comes the rush again. We get it off, but that was almost picked as we threw it into a sea of jerseys of different colors. I mean, he was right there. Well, some days you get the bear, and some days the, the bear, bear gets you. Gets, oh, yeah, you've heard that. Yeah, right? yeah. It's third and nine. The third and nine. Let's see if we can... Well, that helped us as Adams jumped the gun. That moves us up five yards. Sam Adams gets the call for encroaching. Just snuck up a little too much on the ball. Third and four. So it gives us a little bit more of a buffer. We've still got to convert here. And we go to Brown first down. That inside cut from Troy Brown served us so well against the Raiders last week that I have a feeling we're going to be going back to that one quite a lot today. Because as long as we can get Drew enough space that he can look downfield and allow him to make that cut, then we're okay. So second and seven is closing in on two minutes to go in this first quarter. Will he make it in? Touchdown, J.R. Redman. That one couldn't have gone any better as that seam held just enough for him to get across the end zone. That was a big key block right there on Gary Baxter, the quarterback slash safety, to spring JR free, and we are on the board quicker than we were in our game against Oakland, 6 nothing with a point after coming up. Now, I know I've already established that Trying to take on the Baltimore defense seems like a very Herculean task. 
But for those of you who are watching this who were not around or not aware of the NFL circa 2000, because you may have been around, you may have just been too young to remember, or you may not have been interested at the time. But I cannot overstate the ferocity of the Ravens' defense at that time in the NFL. Remember, the Ravens had come into existence in 1994 after the um, after the Browns left Cleveland. They went to Baltimore and became the Ravens. And the architect who helped put all of that together, amazingly enough, as they were going out the door in Cleveland, was one Bill Belichick, who was the head coach of the Browns at the time. When they went to Baltimore, they brought in a former Cleveland Brown Hall of Fame tight end, Ozzie Newsome, to be their general manager. Now... Ozzie Newsome was a great football player. He was a Hall of Fame tight end. He was one of the first truly offensive weapon tight ends in the modern era. There had been Mike Ditka. There was Kellen Winslow. There were guys like that. But Newsome was really the focal point for the Browns offense at their peak in the early to mid 80s but that doesn't mean a guy like that is going to be able to have any sort of success in a front office position well Ozzie Newsom proved himself to be a really really good evaluator of talent and an excellent GM to the point where he went into the Hall of Fame as both a player and as a GM as Gerbach throws that away incomplete to avoid the sack and it'll be fourth down So, in assembling the Ravens' defense, it wasn't just the fact that they got Ray Lewis and at a time when they didn't really know what they had with Ray Lewis until he got out in the field and showed him. And Ray, until about probably five, six years into the league, was still a really raw, unfinished product. He was a, a, a definitive talent for sure. But if you know the story about what happened to him after the Super Bowl, and I'm not going to relitigate it, the fact is is that he was involved in a situation that led to uh, the death of at least one person. It was proven in a court that he was not directly the person who did it. It was, in a lot of ways, guilt by proximity. But he had to overcome all that stuff <coughs> and still be able to show that he could be the focal point of the Ravens' defense. But that's where Ozzie came in into his brilliance, understanding that, okay, well, I need to make sure that there are guys that can work around him, which is where they found Saragusa and Sam Adams and Peter Bulware, and then later on, Drafting Ed Reed to be the Robin to his Batman. As we find Emmanuel first down near midfield. And Ed Reed was one of those guys that if you had to play against him, you absolutely hated him. In the same way that being a Red Sox fan and watching the Yankees every year, I hated Derek Jeter. You hated him because he was so good. And you knew he was good. And you knew playing him was never going to be easy and he was going to make life hell for you. But if you beat him, you knew you accomplished something. Ed Reed was that way to the point where Bill Belichick, even to this day, says that Ed Reed was the best safety that he's ever seen in the NFL. Ever. So let's see here. Second and eight. We're making good progress. We're just on Baltimore's side of the field. And that was punched away. Unfortunately, Johnson didn't break when I wanted him to, and we got rushed on the throw.
So we'll need to go to the air again here on third and eight. And this time we get to Emmanuel for the first down. That inside cut again, whether it be Brown or Emmanuel, that's the that's the play that is really helping us at this stage in the season. It's not a big chunk play, but it's enough to get us a first down consistently and move the chains and keep the defense just off guard, although Jamie Sharper was all over Redmond on that one. Sharper didn't play with the Ravens that long. He was kind of towards the end of his career, but... Like Ray Lewis, he was no slouch, and you were always keeping an eye out for where 55 was just as much as you were looking for 52. And then you had Peter Bullware, 58, who was kind of like a, for lack of a better term, he was the silent assassin, although he just announced his presence of authority right there. Is really causing some headaches for his team, Dan. He shut down that play like Elliot Ness closing down a Chicago speakeasy. It's going to be third and ten. Oh, we were looking for Brown. He had it. He knew he had it, and he dropped it. The Patriots had to come up with a big play and didn't. Third and long. Well, a few times Troy Brown has let us down this season, and we're too far out for a field goal because this would be a... Thirty-five would be a fifty-two yarder, sixty-two yarder. So I'd rather try and pin him back. Not a great punt, but not terrible. We've got him inside the twenty with three oh eight to go in the first half. We'll get the ball back to start the second half again. The Ravens had their defense forced the punt. Now and the Ravens have not been able to do much offensively as I expected them to. Because that was the one real issue they had for a long time was as good as the defense was. And again, this was proven in equal measure by having Trent Dilfer as their quarterback during their first Super Bowl run. They needed an offense that could really get them 10, 14 points at most. And then the defense would lock down the opposing offense. And that's how they would get the win. Or they get 7 to 14 points on offense. The defense would force a turnover. And with guys like Woodson in the secondary, Rod Woodson, who had the most pick sixes... In NFL history before Ed Reed came along. They did and a lot of times they were manufacturing points on the defensive side of the ball. But Gerbach yet to complete a pass today. And we need to take advantage of that on this drive. So closing in on the two-minute warning. So Richardson will send this one on its way. Well, decent field position here as Brown will take it inside the 40. We're, we got a penalty, though. We'll see who it's on, if it's coming back or not. It is, so we are back on our side of the field. Thanks to the clip. And I think we're going to back up five more yards. And Damian Woody, again, just cannot hold still. And he's our center. He's got the ball. He is so Twitchy. It's now first and fifteen. And here comes Bullware to get the first sack of the day for the Ravens. And now 
They are in seek and destroy mode. I knew at some point they were going to start busting through the line. If they start applying blitzes and really putting pressure on us, we're going to be hating life. Really fast. We've reached the two-minute warning. So that brings us to the two-minute warning. Enjoying a small advantage, seven zero. All of the twenty-seven yard line. All right, so it's second and long. We go to Emmanuel, and he gets upfield. He's Made it closer to a first down as he picks up 20 on that play. Or 14, rather. Oh, and this time they got to us again as Sam Adams went right off the line, spun around his man, and put Drew on his butt. Well, that's exactly what I did not want to have happen. So thanks to a Damian Woody false start penalty, two sacks... And inability to run the ball despite that throw. The Ravens need to get their offense off. We had to give it back. A couple first downs would go a long way to that end. 57 seconds to go. Now we just gotta hope that this Baltimore offense remains as anemic as it has been. Fumble! And we pick the ball up and Cox still has it. And now we get it back with under a minute to go, and we are in great field position. So, yeah, that was clearly a fumble. And Brian Cox, the veteran middle linebacker. So we have 50 seconds on the clock before halftime. And thrown into triple coverage looking for Brown. We didn't want that one. He's lucky not to be saddled with an interception there, Dan. There were guys all over the place out there. That was not a smart throw, Peter. All on the 28th. And sacked again as I was waiting for Johnson to get open. And Dwayne Thomas came through. Not the time for my defense, my offensive line to completely forget how to play in this game. But it's third and twenty, and now we're going to have to throw up an air ball. And he got hit as he threw it, because here came Sam Adams. Patriots ought to throw up a little mortar with those bricks. So let's see, this would be a when they're done, Dan. Well, what they're not building is an effective offense. It has I think we are out of range, so we're gonna have to punt it away again. Costello lines up, and this will be his third punt of the game. Decent punt. Will it go out of bounds? No, they're going to take it into two. So we could not capitalize on the turnover. Really start this one out in a hole. They just got to forget about the end zone behind them and start moving the football. And with two seconds left in the half, I expect they'll run this one and just run the clock out before, so we can go to the locker room. Nope. And they'll pick up the first. 
So they ran the play action and that got him a first down, but not nearly enough as we get the seven nothing lead going to the break. And after having that first drive go well, we have just not been able to achieve anything offensively. And this is not the time for that to go stagnant on us. We needed to get a lot more points on those drives and we came up completely empty on four of them. Including getting that turnover, getting really good field position. So we've only got 39 passing yards and 30 rushing yards. But we're so overwhelmed by this defensive box of the front four and the linebackers. They and again. They hang tough and don't yield an inch. It's all about perseverance, Dan. Oh, I think they even got knocked back a bit. What a blow to this offense's morale. <laughs> they can't let that stand. Expect them to come back strong. I'd love to. But these guys up front just are not giving us... As soon as the door gets opened... We can't get any further than two yards. So third and ten. And that one's incomplete. As Bulwer and Sharper were back there playing center field on that one. So we're going to have to punt it away for a third time. Decent punt. So they will take over their 44-yard line. Some points on the board. When you give it up like they did last time, you want to rebound fast. This would be a blowout if their offense was anywhere near being productive. That chunk play we gave up at the very end of the half does not really count to me. They found Ishmael, but this is coming back. No, that was against us. I thought that was offensive holding, not defensive holding. So it's first and ten for Baltimore on our side of the field. And that time, they're looking for Shannon Sharp, the Hall of Fame tight end. And Ty Law made certain that that one did not get completed. That one was, and it'll be a pickup of six. That was probably tougher than it looks, Dan. Not only was it coming in low and very fast, but it was about a step ahead of him. Not to be third and four. He was able to extend his arms and make the catch, and most importantly, not slow down. Good job. Third and four. They handed it off, and Ted Johnson said, no, sir, not happening on my watch. A much-needed third-down stop. So now Baltimore's going to have to punt it away again. And he coffin cornered it, so it'll be first and ten for us at our five-yard line. The Patriots have really got their back up against the wall here. I'd favor a quick pass to give himself some breathing room. Hey. 
All right, so we first and 10 at our five. You know, we got to hope for something that does not result in a sack. And we got out to Johnson first down and a bit more. Boy, do we need that. That was almost a safety. Now we've got a ton of breathing rooms. We're up around our 35 yard line. And Saragusa wasn't even in the vicinity of that, and he still reached out and stopped him. I thought I was past him on that first charge into the line. So Redmond, 12 carries, just 36 yards. And Brown dropped it again. Oh, I can't afford to be having them dropping these balls like that. I threw it right to him. That should have been a first down and then some. Instead, we got to punt it away again. Because my receiving core has lost the ability to receive. I'm extremely grateful that they aren't because that's the only thing that's keeping us in this lead. They run the screen pass to Lewis, and Seymour read it perfectly. Or no, that went to Sam Gash. He's number 32. Jermaine Lewis is 31. He's second and 10. And they ran the screen again out to Gash in the flat. He picked up four. That should have been a sack. It'll be third and six. And that one's swatted down by Teddy Bruschi. So once again, we're gonna have, they're gonna have to punt it back to us. So a offensive showcase this absolutely has been not. And that's the annoying bit. I have one guy in front of me. I try and get by him. I get knocked backwards, and I get knocked backwards again. And that's how it's been on the run, and then my crocodile arm receivers, who just couldn't, they couldn't catch a cold at this point. Nowhere to run, baby. No place to pass to either with these guys on the case. So this will probably be the final play of the third. And that's incomplete because Johnson didn't cut back in when I expected him to. He ran a curl route. And I expected him to come in sharper than that. Instead, he waited until he was ahead of three, behind three other guys. Ball at the 
We go to Emmanuel. He manages to muscle ahead for the first down. And that will end the third quarter. So we finally move the chains. And now we go to the fourth, still up by just seven. And we absolutely need a score on this drive. We need a two-score advantage before the end of this game. Because <laughs> at some point, you just know that Baltimore is going to spring out a big chunk play, and that's what's going to help us out. Or that's what's going to do us in, rather, I should say. And in the meantime, we're picking up two yards, two yards, two yards. We're running the clock down. That's great, but we still need to be able to move the chains. We still need forward progress. He goes to Brown with Peter Bulware on his back. It'll be third and two. And we go to Edwards for the first down. When in doubt, bust out the fullback. Mark Edwards didn't have to fight very hard to get the first down there. It was a good, clean run. First and ten. And that one knocked down incomplete. Drew Bledsoe really blew it with that throw. I mean, there were three sharks in the water out there. Yeah, you know, I thought it was a mistake to bunch up the coverage in one zone like that, but apparently they knew just what they were doing. Of course they knew just what they were doing. They pretty much know the plays as I'm calling them. And that one incomplete. I was looking for Troy Brown. Troy Brown had a pretty good hunk of that one, Dan, but just couldn't make the catch. I know that's real frustrating when you tip a pass like that, but he's got to make those. Third and ten. Except he hasn't made them all day. That one no good. That's three in a row, and it's going to be fourth down. So we have to punt it really drop the ball, so to speak, again. Play. Yeah, they've got to make headway on first and second downs. Lines up for the field goal. And I called the wrong play, of course. So I have to burn a timeout that I wasn't looking to do. And they take their first timeout. Costello lines up, and this will be his sixth punt of the game. Six punts. Now this should be a. The Ravens have the ball as this one cruises to a close. Oh, it's going to be a touchback. I couldn't put it better than that. Yet when I had that happen against Oakland, they pinned me on their on my freaking goal line. The Ravens. So first and ten at their twenty with three forty one to go in the ball game. And what has become an absolute punt fest. And they go to Gash first down, even though I ran a run block defense on that play. All of a sudden they open up a really big gap and Gash ran right through it. And we should have had a sack on Gerbach on that one. He's second and three, I formation. And of course, Gash falls ahead for another yard. That guy at arm's length with a brutally effective stiff arm. Ooh, he didn't buy him much, but he got a few. So be third and two. Can't Need a critical like stop that. here as we're closing down the two-minute warning. It's third and 
That was tipped incomplete. If that had been caught, that would have been six. Are they going to punt it? They're going to go for it. They're going to punt it. So they're going to give the ball back to us with 2.22 to go. And a trip to the Super Bowl hanging in the balance here. would definitely like to score here. There's not enough time left for mistakes. I've been wanting to score for most of the day. Is that either the defensive line for the Ravens will not allow me to move more than six inches. Like so. Their secondary has ESP and automatically knows what I'm going to throw and what I'm going to run. So they can have everybody positionally perfect to stop it. Or my receivers simply can't catch. So we go underneath the rib, and that wasn't who I was looking to throw it to either. But I'll take it as it gives me a first down. That was almost picked off. That should have been picked off. Bullware sitting back there with uh, Woodson covering Troy Brown. And I got sacked as I got away from one guy, but not the second one, of course. That would make life easier, and league rules frown upon such things. So third and long. And sacked again. As I threw the ball, the ball was there on its way out. As soon as I saw Troy cut, I let the ball go. But Drew Bledsoe has got the slowest release that I have ever seen. So now it sets it up where my defense has to stop the offense one more time. And all I needed was one first down, and I could have kept running the ball and ran the clock out. Because I needed them to utilize their timeouts, and they weren't doing it. They used one. And now they're on my side of the field with 90 seconds to go. And caught. Instead of it being picked or tipped. So now they'll spike it. This may end up going to overtime. Because I think the plot armor is getting to the point now where the Ravens are going to score. That one incomplete. Fortunately, Lawyer Malloy was there to keep Johnson from pulling that one in. But just couldn't get control. He should uh, renegotiate his contract so they pay him by the finger. Third and ten. Third and ten. And I know they're going to go for it if they get the fourth down. That one was caught. How was that ball caught? So they'll stop the clock again. So now they got 15 yards to go. 
to get to the end zone and tie this ball game up potentially. Ball on the 14. But on both those receptions, my guys were there and they neither knocked the ball down or jarred it loose like they did right there. And I needed that one. There were two guys out there who might have picked it off. He obviously thought that, you know, he can thread a needle and get to his receiver. But I'll tell you, that is a big risk. So 54 seconds to go. They need a touchdown to tie plus the point after. And he didn't get there. So it's fourth and five as they found Shannon Sharp on the flat. They've got to go for it. The game's still within reach, Peter, but it all rests on this play. So 50 seconds to go. It's fourth and five. They need five yards of the first down, 10 yards for the touchdown. And they don't get it! They found Johnson in the end zone and Lawyer Malloy jarred the ball loose. So we get at our 10 yard line with 47 seconds to go. Now they didn't use their timeouts. So 16 carries, 43 yards. And now I just want to let the clock run down as much as humanly possible here. There's a one second difference between the game clock and the play clock. And they're not calling timeouts. And that'll do it. So, it wasn't pretty. And damn if it wasn't frustrating. But we hang on to punch our ticket to the Super Bowl with a 7-0 lead over the Baltimore Ravens to win the AFC Championship game. In what's got to be the ugliest such game in recent or pretty much anybody's memory. That could be in the memory of the oldest inhabitant. Now the question becomes, who do we face in the Super Bowl? And we will face the New Orleans Saints again. The team that beat us in the regular season. They took down the Rams 36-28. And boy, are we going to have a tough road to hoax. If we thought the Ravens were difficult, we couldn't move the ball at all against the Saints in that game. And now we only have the Vince Lombardi trophy riding on this. So there will be no repeat for the Rams and the greatest show on turf. And that, everybody, is Sports Saturday for this week. Whew, that's one that's going to sting for a while, even though we got the win. But that shows us how much getting one little advantage and being able to hang on the rest of the way can help you in games like this. So now... In our next episode, it's the final one of the season as it's Super Bowl time. Us against the New Orleans Saints, which in 2001 parlance gives both teams a chance for their first ever world championship and their first ever Lombardi trophy in the case. This should be an interesting one, but... Uh, in the meantime, be sure to follow us on social media through Instagram at Threads at Runs Retrocade. Help spread the word about us as we continue to build this channel and make it bigger and better. My name is Ronan. It's been great to spend this Sports Saturday with you. Be safe, be well, happy gaming. We'll see you tomorrow for Sucker Punch Sunday, and then we will catch up with you again next week as we see who will take home the Super Bowl trophy.
Bye.